guys, welcome back to The Wine Rookie. I'm your Wine Rookie host, Paul, and today we are opening up a Cabernet Sauvignon. But before we do that, I'd like to invite you guys to all hit that like and subscribe button, especially if you enjoy and love wine as much as I do. We are here bringing weekly tastings and reviews of wines that aren't $1,000 Bordeaux varietals, but wines that you can pick up at your local wine store or even a great deal at a grocery store, uh, such as the reserve bottles that we've done from Trader Joe's. Uh, like I said, hit that like and subscribe button. It'll definitely help support the channel and you'll be able to get uh, notifications uh, when we post a new video. Let's dive into uh, this Cabernet Sauvignon. This is from, from Glenelli Estate down in South Africa. Cabernet Sauvignons are probably the most widely uh, planted grape in the world uh, and most notably from Bordeaux and Napa Valley in California. Uh, but this is from the Stellenbosch region in South Africa, which also produces incredibly quality Cabernet Sauvignons. So much so that the former owner of the Poliac Chateau Pichon Comtesse purchased this winery in 2003 and planted Bordeaux varietal grapes uh, all over the estate, which have thrived and uh, have produced this uh, Cabernet Sauvignon for us. Decanter gave this Cabernet Sauvignon 93 points and promised that it would over deliver big time for the price. So let's open this up and give it a try. But first, B roll. All right, everybody, we have the 2018 vintage of Glenelli's Glass Collection Cabernet Sauvignon poured out, and we're going to take a closer look. As always, first we look at the color and the appearance of a wine. Um, it's good to get into the habits to just assess um, all the characteristics of a wine, so we start there. Um, guys, this is definitely a ruby color, um, and it's deep. It's a deep ruby, um, and we know that because I can't see anything through it. Um, through the grades of intensity of the colors, um, you can see your fingers less and less through the glass. And this is a deep ruby. I can't see my fingers at all. Um, based on how the wine appears in the glass, I can already tell you it's going to be a dry wine. Um, not a lot of residual sugars left in it. Um, and it's higher in the alcohol content. I know that from looking at the bottle. Um, but you can also tell uh, looking at the legs. Uh, just kind of assess what does a 14% alcohol contents legs look like in, a, in the glass? Um, and do that throughout all your wines and you'll start to be able to assess uh, lower alcohol, the higher alcohol wines. Guys, let's just uh, swirl the glass to activate some aroma compounds um, so that we can assess the bouquet of this wine. I can already tell you just by swirling this glass around that uh, it has... It's a very aromatic wine. I can already smell it without even putting my nose up to the glass, um, but we're gonna we're gonna do that anyways to get a better assessment. Guys, what's popping out most are these red fruits. I get some tart cherry, I get stewed plum, black currant. Um, there's some cedar wood and mint leaf in there as well. It's got a great bouquet, and like I said, very, very, very aromatic. Guys, let's taste this wine. That's what we're here for. Decanter gave it 93 points and said it's going to over-deliver big time for the price. Let's find out if that's true. Guys, let's talk about the tannins first. There's some pretty polished tannins in here. I'd say medium plus tannins. I mean, they're pretty chalky. So when we're talking about tannins, and you can think of like a silky tannin, something soft and smooth, chalky is just like a little more, like crank it up a dial, a notch. And that's your chalky tannins. Really great on the palate, especially because it pairs well with that uh, bright acidity this wine has. I got red fruits at the beginning of the palette, and then as it developed and towards the end of it, 
it finished with this kind of smoky, long uh, cigar box kind of finish to it. It was really, it juxtaposed well with those bright fruits on the beginning. Um, and if you've never t tasted a wine that has cigar box uh, in, the, in the tasting notes, pick this one up. You'll definitely get it. Uh, let it breathe for a while. Give it, aerate it some nice in your glass, decant it, um, and you'll taste that long cigar box finish. I know what decanter means when they're saying that this over delivers for the price. Um, this tastes like a bottle two, three times the, uh, the price I paid for it. Uh, that being said, because it's such a nice, I feel like over delivering bottle of Cabernet, I don't want to pair it with any, anything like a hamburger, which I was kind of thinking this might pair well more of a hamburger wine than a, uh, than a steak wine. But this is a, try this with a braised lamb shank, uh, sear it on the sides and then just braise it in the oven with some tomato sauce. And I think it's going to come out great and pair really well with this Cabernet Sauvignon. And then if you're doing a cheese plate, try a Pecorino Toscano. I think that's going to be uh, the perfect pairing to go with this, this wine. We're kind of sticking with the sheep theme for this one, lamb and sheep cheese. Oh, but I think it's going to be great. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Go pick this bottle up if you're into Cabernet Sauvignons. I know a lot of people stick to uh, California. Paso Robles is just so affordable. But just for a couple dollars more, you can pick up this bottle from Stellenbosch, South Africa. Don't forget to like and subscribe on the way out. And we'll see you next time on The Wine Rookie. Cheers.